New characters always spawn with these three items, a copper short sword, pickaxe, and axe. But what if your character loaded into the world with absolutely nothing? Now you may be thinking, how bad could it be? I mean, in Minecraft you start off with nothing and that works just fine. But the thing about Minecraft is that Steve's fist substitutes for all of these tools. In Terraria, we don't quite have that luxury. So, can you still beat the game or are these tools necessary to progress? All right, so uh, we can't actually do anything right now um, <laughs> other than explore. And that's what we're gonna start off with. Uh, again, we can't break anything, we can't mine anything. We are kind of stuck at the moment. Remember before when I was talking about Steve's multi-tool fists? Well, there is an item that effectively does the same thing in this game. We just don't start off with it. And that item is a bomb. It can destroy tiles, damage enemies, and most importantly, harvest trees. And so our first goal had been set. Destroy a pot and if luck was on our side, we'll have our explosives. However, there is one major problem with this. Without a weapon or tool, I can't actually break the pots yet. Now, I could carelessly jump into this trench in search of a weapon, but that runs the risk of getting softlocked due to bad world gen. So this will be our last resort. Therefore, the only other option was to search the right side of the world. But uh, <laughs> there were some complications with this plan too. Ooh. Okay, this is bad. So we are stuck. We can't gets to any chests so this is going to we're gonna, we're gonna need to change the plans <laughs> with no options left i went back to the trench which ended up being a dead end thankfully a chimera spawned so i had to way back up but besides a measly four cobweb we're right back where we started depending on a world seed you could end up trapped like this with no way of obtaining a weapon so are we soft locked do we have to try a new world well not quite it turns out that regardless of your world seed there's still a way to progress our way forward relies upon our buddy Trent and a green slime. It turns out that weapons and other tools are not the only things that can break pots. Torches can too. So, problem solved, we just need the guy to kill some slimes. But wait just a moment, how do you craft a torch if we can't get wood? Well, you can't. But we don't need to. All we need is some RNG. Each one of these green slimes has a very small chance to be holding a bonus item of torches. However, when I say small chance, I really mean it. According to the wiki, each slime has a 5% chance of carrying an item. Combine this with the fact that only about 6% of the bonus drop slimes will have a torch, and you're looking at around 1 in 320 odds. As expected, the first day went by and we had nothing to show for it. But I wasn't going to give up. I knew that it was technically possible, so I pushed on. Most of the night was spent running from zombies while also leading them away from the guide, because if Trent goes down, we have to reset. But then, out of nowhere, this happened. <gasps> oh! A torch zombie spawned. This was our chance, our ticket to progression. We could finally move forward. I died. But it's okay, false alarm, we're in 1.4 and that zombie picked up our coins. Come on. <laughs> Please. Yes. Yes! That's our ticket. <laughs> we got it, we got it. Okay. And by turning the combo we got from before into rope, we could now access the other side. Here we go. Alright, shurikens. Now, since we're using torches, we can place them down and then right click to pick them back up. And uh, it works really great. Now we can actually see, so there might have even been a chest somewhere in this area. All right, so that cavern there leads into the crimson, and well, we had no way down. At this point, I've already destroyed all the pots available to me, so we're effectively back at square one. Or so I thought. That's when I had an idea. You see that Crimera lurking below? Well, if I could lure it towards me and then jump on top of it at precisely the right time, I could then use the knockback to reach the other side. Okay, um, <laughs> that was a practice run. We'll get it next time, for sure. Oh, and while we're traveling back to the trench, if you guys are enjoying the content so far and would like to see more, I'd really appreciate it if you consider subscribing. Thanks. All right, I'm gonna try and lure this. Oh, it's doing it for me. Yes, okay, go. <laughs> this is so dumb, but it worked. But it worked. Oh, and that's good. The rope is really good there. And while that may have looks like a complete and utter failure, it wasn't as bad as you think because we got a rope out of one of those pots. Which means we can get back there without having to rely on that little trick jump. Torch. Rope. More rope is nice, but I do just want bombs. Wooden arrows. We're getting everything but bombs. <laughs> this is great. Potion. Okay, it did come in handy. Okay, three bombs. Okay. 
I think we need more. I think we need a lot more. Oh, this is interesting. This is very interesting. I don't know what to do now. Originally, my plan was to use bombs to get wood, build a couple houses so the merchant could spawn, and then from there we could buy a pickaxe and axe. But now that we have ore, we might be able to skip building houses altogether. If we use our bombs to harvest wood, we could then craft a workbench, furnace, and still have some left for the tools. This is exactly what we set off to do. While gathering wood, I decided it would be worth to bomb the tree as there could be some valuable loot inside. Oh, this is so worth. This was so worth. There's our weapon. Okay, well, we don't actually need a weapon anymore. <laughs> now that I think about it, I don't think that affects us now that we have the torches, but we do have a weapon, which is neat. So we can actually defend ourselves and recalls, so we can't get soft locked. I didn't expect this to be so involved. <laughs> I thought this would be pretty simple, but no, we're still, we're still going. Okay, and now we have the ability to make, I didn't even consider this option. However, I forgot about one very important detail for this plan to work. Oh, do we need an anvil? I kind of forgot about that. <laughs> okay, maybe this isn't, maybe that was a waste. We need an anvil, which means 15 iron ore, but we only have one bomb left. So there's no way we could get enough. So rather than using the bomb on an ore vein only to be just short of the anvil, I instead decided to use it to unlock a new area, leading to more resources. I like this. Do I bomb this? Yeah, because even if I use the bomb up here, there's no guarantee this leads to anything great. Actually, hold on. Let me see if I can get back up there. This could lead somewhere. Okay. And we've made it past. Okay, this changes things. Is that a chest? That's a chest. That could have bombs in it. Okay. Oh! <gasps> There's the iron and wood. <laughs> okay, that I think that just right there solved all of our problems, but I'm gonna keep exploring before we head back. Um, silver, more bombs. Okay, here's all the luck that I was looking for before in the world gen. We've just got a lot of things, <laughs> very important things. So we got iron from the chest, uh, which I guess is the anvil. With the anvil, we can then use the tin we got from the detonator to get the pickaxe. So this was not the route I had in mind, but right there we just got the pickaxe and now the axe. And then here's a weapon. <laughs> so we just, we completed it. And with that, we've obtained all of the starting tools so you can just go ahead and play normally here and beat Moonlord. Now, of course, uh, I won't be showing you guys that because you guys have seen that enough <laughs> here on this channel. But yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you all in the next one.